Hey, Brad Clark here from Rigging Dojo. It's been a while since I've done a Maya quick tip, and I figured I would start off by using some of the new features and focus on skinning and deformation. Um, while these tools actually aren't new in Maya, they are working better, and so I want to make sure that um, you know when Autodesk fixes something, let's uh, let's put it to use. So with that, I'm going to use this awesome character mesh uh, and model. And um, this is a really, really cool character. It's for free upon Sketchfab. So I downloaded it and um, I grabbed one that was animated with a skeleton as well. And so I'm going to use that skeleton to rig this mesh. Let's jump over to Maya. So the first thing. Um, I'm going to look at, and this is Maya 2022, but this stuff all should work in 2022 forward. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Maya has um, changed how the bind skin system works and the deformation system. And so as of 2022, um, you can do proximity wrap and skin cluster. And I'm going to stick with old school skin cluster for now, but um, this should work with proximity wrap. but um, the, 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 the tip or the thing I'm going to show you to make skinning something like this faster is going to be uh, a combination of tips. So first of all, um, when you open the skin, bind skin settings, we're going to switch this to select joints and bind method, we're going to do closest and hierarchy. And this has been in here forever, but it basically helps keep Maya from getting skinning from something that's close by because it looks down the hierarchy instead of by distance. And I use this still, it's faster than heat map and voxel. And for this case, we actually, I just want it to be as, as cleanly um, skinned as possible to begin with. I'm gonna turn off a lot of multiple bind poses and we're gonna set the max influences to one. You'll find countless skinning tutorials where um, people just mindlessly bind the skin and then spend the next, you know, 20 minutes or longer going through and selecting and, and skinning uh, by hand chunks of vert vertices to individual bones at a value of one. That's great if you're trying to be perfectionist about it, <laughs> but you know, this, these tips are going to show you how to quickly get something up and running. And, you know, for, for a small game character or a character that's just going to be in the background or even just prototyping for concept art, this should get you pretty far. Next tip is going to be default this to neighbors because the old distribution of distance meant that anytime you did any kind of weighting, um, the skin would shoot values all over the place, which made it really difficult. So default to neighbors. And note that when you import an FBX file, even if you have exported it with neighbors on, when you re-import it, it defaults back to distance on the skin cluster itself. So um, when we bind with neighbors, when you go to the actual skin cluster, um, like I said, if you if you import the skin cluster from um, FBX, it does not use neighbors. So I want you to make sure that it's on neighbors. And um, we're going to turn off maintain max influences for now. We're going to turn off remove unused influences because this shouldn't be used if you start with selected joints. And then colorized skeleton, we're going to turn off um, in at least certain versions of Maya colorizing the skeleton actually slowed down performance. So um, I just leave it off as default. And then um, this is a new option, include hidden selections. I don't need any of that either. So drop off by 4.0 default is fine. And so when we skin this, um, make sure you right click and say select similar to grab all the joints, or you can select uh, by type. Select all by type joints if you want, but I find right clicking and selecting similar to work faster. And um, then your mesh and skin. So when you skin it with a default of one, you should see when we grab these influences that it's very rigid. And in these areas back here that are maybe a little more complex, you're not going to get perfect weighting, but Again, I didn't have to go through by hand and rigid block all of my vert, vert weights. Um, I just get this stuff working. 
So obviously there's issues in certain areas, but overall, not a bad initial bind for one vertex per joint. These areas that are difficult are always gonna be complicated and anything that's a weird function, like something just is not moving right, like this stuff in the back, um, you can quickly grab double clicks to select a, a range and either do skin, hammer skin weights to try to average that, which does okay. Um, but since we're still in rigid bind mode, I'm just gonna grab the weight, uh, a single vertex that um, contains the weight that I want and use copy vertex weight. And yes, there are hotkeys for this, but I'm not gonna do those at the moment and then paste. So that hard rigid binds that. And then the same thing, I can just grab this and paste the vertex weights again to lock down anything that is just looking weird. So same thing, copy, uh, copy vertex weights and then paste vertex weights. And now we're cleaning up these areas that are just clearly, they didn't get skinned correctly. So that's the, the first tip is just to finish blocking the stuff in is, um, you know, grab, grab the stuff that's good and paste it over the stuff that's bad. And I'm still not having to use any of the component editor. I'm not having to do anything special. I'm just fixing it so that um, the weights are where they're supposed to be. And if it's hard to tell, you can always select everything and um, do control one and that will isolate select so that you can see what's going on. And so here we see that there's like, this is part of the back and this side maybe looks okay, but I'm just gonna go ahead and again, um, copy the weights and then we can paste these onto these points and actually hammer, hammer skin weights for this would actually work pretty well. So we'll try it and it will average them out, but I still wanna get um, 100% lockdown. So the reason I'm starting with a rigid bind also is that for the next two deformers we're going to use, delta mush and tension, it's going to give us best results when you start off with a rigid volume. So we want to start it with a rigid bind and then let the delta mush handle the averaging of the verts in areas that it can instead of us trying to smooth it and then applying a delta mush after that it doesn't really do anything. We've already lost the volume due to skinning. There again, there's some areas in here that are gonna be just a mess, but let's uh, let's not spend too much more time on this. We're gonna try to use the deformer system in Maya to help us out. Now, what are some alternatives? Obviously, if we jump around to um, the web, so a ton of people that upload stuff to Mixamo, and you let it auto skin something for you and it will average the weights and do an okay job and then you can you've got cleanup but for having to jump in and out of the process of uploading files and moving stuff around and re-importing um, this gets us pretty close pretty quickly the other is the actor core rigging tools from Reallusion, and they have a much better rigging system for building a rig out of a mesh but um, again those are all tools that require logins and you to leave your environment. So if you're already in Maya and you're trying to stay in Maya, then let's put these tools to use. Um, I've got my skin cluster, and the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, in bind pose. Previous versions, you needed to be in bind pose, and they're better, but it's just easier to start in bind pose for, for what's gonna come next anyway. We're going to assign a uh, tension deformer. So I'm gonna use the tension deformer um, here, tension, and if we go back to here, let's go ahead and edit the envelope and see what happens with the tension. So already you can see that these some of these areas that are problematic, the tension deformer is going to kind of try to hold those areas that are stretching together. And you can change the smoothing iteration. I'm just gonna do a little bit of smoothing because again, I still want the delta mush to do its job and I don't want to lose too much volume. Um, I don't want these big squishy areas. I just want to average this down a little bit and help kind of contain the uh, deformation. Inward and outward constraints. So if you adjust this, you can kind of help hold some of the shape. If you really had like a hard edge that you wanted to hold on to, you can do that um, and inward as well. Um, here you can see a good example on this, uh, this strap back here. 
if I do inward constraint, it's trying to kind of hold towards the original source mesh in the bind pose. So these these big uh, these these straps coming off of the the, uh, the arms. Um, if I do nothing, then you start to lose volume. So I can leave inward constraint on and outward constraint. Um, in this case, isn't doing too much, but I do want to kind of hold those shapes, and then we can up the smoothing a little bit. Again, you can adjust all this stuff to your liking, but this is going to be a good start to clean up some of the weighting, but give us still a good uh, base for the delta mesh. So then the next thing we do is we apply the delta mesh under deform menu. And in this case here, the delta mesh is active and we can see um, in the areas that are, we lose a little bit of volume, but um, it helps to take these edges off, right? So in order for this sharp edge to get fixed by hand, we'd have to go in and paint weight and this does it globally. Now there are going to still be issues, right? Like this, this, um, this strap is skinned to the arm and, you know, you can spend a little more time cleaning up than I am. But again, if you're seeing the character from this far away and it's moving around and you, it's just, you know, it's good enough, right? I've, I've got this skinned and ready to go. And if we, um, show the shading with, uh, the texture, um, you know, you may or may not see all the, the issues. So use your time wisely to get some work done, right? If you're afraid of AI taking your job, start working smarter. <laughs> so Delta Mush is on. And then again, we can go to these uh, frames and we can just adjust this a little bit to give us some decent smooth weighting. And it fixed some of the issues in the thigh and the glutes and the and it fixed the the lats and some of these other things like all right so now we have all of our skinning done and what do we do next well if i want to export this to a game these do not export and um, if i want to take their starting point and continue painting weights i can't do that either um, you can go in and paint the areas and edit the um, where the tension map is or where the delta mush is so if there's an area that just really is not, you don't want it to do anything, you can paint those out and, and continue to edit this further. But as far as like a quick, you know, Mixamo actor core alternative rigging system, this is going to get us there pretty quickly. Okay, so I've got this working the way I want, and now I need to bake this stuff down. And there are tools like Dembones and other, um, the Unreal now has the machine learning deformer that will kind of take these deformation effects and you can get them down into to runtime effects or skin weighting. But Maya has had this tool built in for a while under skin. And we will take a look at the baked deformation to skin weights. Um, please make sure you start in bind pose because it references the start frame. And if you don't, it will make a mess. So uh, I'm in bind pose for where the character is rigged. And I want to basically run this tool. And the way it works, if I reset it, um, you need to give it a skeleton source and mesh. And so if you select the skeleton and the mesh, and notice I'm doing on this uh, FK skeleton, not a rig. It's way more complicated. So um, hopefully you just have a skeleton to work with. You can always transfer the weights to a rigged version of this later. But I have a, a game compatible, mocap compatible skeleton and the mesh, and I hit source. And the destination is basically going to be the same object in the same skeleton. So I'm not I'm not using this as a transfer to go to some other high res object. This is the base. But the other popular workflow you'll find for a ton of skinning tutorials is to work on a low res skin cage and then copy the skin weights up. But in this case, you can actually use it to um, transfer the, the all the layer effect deformation to a source and a t destination skeleton and there's some extra stuff in the python script or the command of this tool that can actually let you define this and control this anymore so if you're into programming dig through the command for this tool but for now we're just going to use out of the box stuff to make it easy 
So we've set the source and destination. I did that by selecting these two and just clicking the buttons. And then the number of influences, um, I'm going to set it to three because, again, my intention is I want this to be as light as possible. I don't want it to create extra work for me. And if I want to clean up stuff or smooth an area further, I can always do that with the, the paint tools. But um, I want to limit how much the software actually is doing to the skin. So I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see that now it's going to go through and rotate every joint and do a calculation. It's going to compare the, the deformation with all of this, the tension map and the delta mush and figure out how the changes are. And then it's going to set the skin weighting to best approximate that. So obviously, the skin weight is a linear interpolation. You'll never be able to hold volume or do. Um, sliding skin surfaces or whatever like you can with the delta mush or tension map but you get usable skin weights that are arguably faster than trying to hand set all these weights yourself on especially on a complex mesh on a deadline or when you're trying to iterate on something that you don't know is final yet this is um, a useful tool to know about and have now it's cooking everything down and when it's done you'll see that it's going to remove the tension and delta mush modifier and set the skin weights to the skin cluster. If you obviously want to keep the stuff around, then having a different destination duplicate mesh skinned is also handy, which is another reason to do it. But right now I'm just, just cleaning this up and baking it down. Now, this has been in Maya for a few versions, but unless you had insane amounts of RAM or a very simple mesh, this used to. Uh, fill up on RAM, and when it ran out of RAM, it would just fail silently. It would leave it in a half-done state. You wouldn't know that it failed. It just looked like it never worked. So thankfully, um, when they released the new version of Maya and updated the deformation system, the bake deformation skin weights tool got fixed. And we tweeted about this or you know, announced it a while ago, but I still think people don't know about these tools. So... I want to point them out and um, maybe it will save you some time. All right, so now the tool's finished and we can go ahead and set this skin cluster back. It creates a new skin cluster, so I'm going to set it to neighbors again and I'm going to turn on maintain max influences, assuming we want this for a game or just to keep Maya from adding extra deformers. And we're going to up the max influence to four so that I can paint and work on this. Now you can see that as far as the skinning goes, it did a pretty good job of cleaning up areas like the hip and legs and the chest that were rigid bound. Before, when we looked at this, you can see now it's got smoothing and it used a maximum of three influences. And certain areas, obviously, just this is not right. So um, again, we can quickly clean this up. We can either grab the um, selection here and do skin, hammer skin weights and that will get it close, or we can just go ahead and grab vertex weight like before. So now we've got the character set, and a lot of our work is done for us, and now if we want to continue to clean this up, like let's say that this um, tube back here was still not exactly what we wanted to do, right? This is still not looking great. So now we can use the hammer skin weights tool, and it knows that there's a limit of four, and it's going to... Um, we can run it a few times to just continue to soften it and we get some decent fixes done and not bad at all for pretty much skinning in real time this whole character with multiple deformers and complicated surfaces this object nothing about this character would be easy to paint because if you go in and paint these surfaces each of these objects is a separate surface so um, this is a lot of work <laughs> there's there's no easy way around this if you were to paint this by hand. Even with uh, really nice tools, if you have Brave Rabbit Smooth or NG Skin Tools, which are amazing, you still have to go get those installed. And if you're at a studio or if you're just a, a student or a Maya user who's trying to get work done, then I hope this speeds up your skinning. And especially if you hate skinning, I hope this helps you out.